Okay, farmer's market, different people, different <laughs> everybody's around. Hey. A voice from the past. The past. The past. No longer politically active. No, not really. Jack McDougall, that's your name? Yeah, that's my name. Uh, former leader of the Green Party. Former leader. Former advisor to the Liberal Party. Yeah. Former contender, contender of the Liberal Party. Yeah. All kinds of political uh, experience. Yeah. Never got elected, but no. all kinds of political baggage, garbage, points, good things. A lot of political things. fun and great experience. Great I experience. I McKenna, I worked uh, executive director of the Liberal Party and Green Party and all of it was good. I enjoyed it. It was you, fun. And great you, way. You're, you're the type of guy that I would love to have coffee with every Saturday because the way you have opinions <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting. It's enough for me to keep my mouth shut and just listen to you. Okay, enough of that. What's your opinion on the Liberal Convention, Liberal Leadership Convention that's coming in October in Milton? Uh, my opinion is uh, the young guy's going to win it. I don't think Mike Murphy will win it personally. He's not a bad guy and I don't wish him ill. Uh, but uh, I, don't Mike Murphy. My, I don't think Mike can pull it off. I thought it was Kelly Lamrock was going to win. Not a chance. I hope not a chance. I mean, with all due respect to Kelly Lamrock. <laughs> what? No way. No, New no. Brunswick's not going down that path. You don't need a super nerd as leader that you can't understand what he, what he oh, speaks? I don't you know. I mean, maybe he will. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, it, You know, people have to examine his, um, you know, decide for themselves. I mean, everybody will. I mean, for a lot of people, Mike Murphy is going to be a great candidate. Uh, and How come who, Mike Murphy won't win? Well, I think because of the way he exited the last time, he openly admitted uh, that um, he misrepresented himself when he resigned from uh, cabinet and caucus and saying that he was going home to be with his family when in fact he now states it was over his position on MB Power. So you can't really start off a leadership convention confessing to a virtual, you know, misrepresentation of the truth. So I think that ends him personally. That's my opinion. I don't think they will. And, and I think the reason Brian Gallant is he's smart, young, intelligent, bilingual, uh, well-educated, um, baggage-free, which is probably the same thing with Kelly Lamrock. He is a ton of uh, baggage. Um, and I think people will opt for a fresh start. Uh, would it be like a party. second print McKenna? I don't see it there. I, I can't mean, see it that way because I mean, David Allward, David Allward is not. And Frank McKenna came in with Hatfield. Frank McKenna you know? had uh, was the luckiest politician in the world. Yeah. I mean, really, uh, his the, it had nothing to do with him. Yeah. It had everything to do with the political climate, and I was right there with him. I mean, I was there before him in the sense that I was on staff before he was the leader of the uh, uh, Liberal Party. You could have been the premier. I was, in fact. Um, the, or, uh, the staff organizer for the Riverview by-election, which actually happened before the Liberal Leadership Convention, and we had never won that in the past, and we won it two and a half to one with Hubert Seaman. So the point being, the, 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 the goose was up on Hatfield. All McKenna had to do was not make any mistakes. This is a completely different scenario now, but every scenario is different. For every new leader, every political circumstance is different, and we always tend to look back and find strands that are uh, little lessons we can learn, so nobody really knows anything about anything, including myself especially. I know you're pretty good. Well, <laughs> but you feel I don't think it's anywhere near that. But then neither was Louis Robichaud's. Louis Robichaud didn't sail to victory, as Frank McKenna did. He won, I think, his leadership on a third ballot and was a bit of a compromise, and he was the most outstanding premier in the history of this province, and you can roll all the rest of them up into one bucket and they wouldn't match what Louis Robichaud did in terms of a legacy, in terms of uh, courage, uh, in terms of a vision that ultimately came true. A lot of politicians have kicked problems down the line, uh, you know, let the next generation worry about it, debts and deficits and problems and, you know, uh, policies on our forest and issues like that, uh, that have really been, in the long term, very, very damaging to the people of New Brunswick. But Louis was a gift that keeps on giving. You feel bad about, about Sean Graham now? I think Sean was a, it was a great guy, but I, I happen to believe he was... Um, 
not well treated by the liberals in the sense that um, I think Frank McKenna could have done a much better job of uh, guiding him through that premiership. Uh, you know, uh, not jumping in, sort of, you know, like he had Francis McGuire there as the CEO of MB Power and Mo Robichaux as communications director and Steve McKinnon up doing something and Doug they do the yeah uh, not so much Doug uh, but the um, the point being is is Frank's fingerprints were all over the sale mm -hmm. of NB Power in my opinion I mean he openly admitted that he gave the advice of where to go get a lawyer and he you know he talked about how courageous it was for Sean to do this and all this baloney and really it was his death knell. If it would have happened, yeah. Frank would have been yes, and he should rewarded. have stepped in and said that no to Atcon, don't give Robbie Tozer that money. Don't he? Frank would have never done that for himself, you know, it, 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 to anybody that was, let's say, uh, you know, completely disconnected from him, had the same case. You couldn't have walked into Frank's office and got fifty million, it, you know. Um, did Sean seek counsel from him? I mean, Frank hailed Robbie Tozer up in the Miramichi just a few months ago. So, I mean, obviously, he, he thinks it was a good decision. I mean... Did Sean I, kicks his ass every morning? Well, he, it might take him a few years before he gets to that point. We tend to rationalize those things that pass us by. But uh, Sean had the golden opportunity. I think the people would have given him another chance. Uh, but he just took on way, way too much for... a. Uh, for a first term, blew up everything that he touched. I don't know anything that he accomplished personally. And that's where the old guys could have stepped in. But it, unfortunately, Sean got himself surrounded by everybody who wanted to be up to their ankles head first in, in the trough. And it looked like everybody was in on that. And maybe, I mean everybody. Maybe he should have been, uh, he should have been had sad, in his trough. Really. Maybe he should have had a few bloggers beside him and give him some advice. He, sh he needed some people who, like, Frank had um, Fernand Landry uh, that really gave just exquisite counsel. Um, just tremendous counsel. Always thinking of Frank first and that's why Fernand Landry was so great uh, and stood out from any other advisor in my opinion that that uh, was around him because uh, every piece of advice I heard it was always in Frank's interest and always in the interest of the province and and uh, and, and so Frank by the way even though he he got this tremendous opportunity I have to tell you that he did a great job of taking advantage of it and surrounding himself with people and and uh, good people and 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 not in, not necessarily including myself but I know the ones having been where I was to have seen and witnessed them in action but even Sean didn't have that I mean Sean had one guy you know he's at the head MB liquor I mean you know practically you know in court the whole time defending himself from yeah. influence peddling and uh, and then, and then having a cabinet meeting. I mean, Kelly Lamrock was in on that cabinet meeting that gave a guy a pension that he didn't deserve. And now Kelly wants to be the leader, you know? So all of that kind of counsel, Sean didn't know. Sean, it was like he had won at the candy store and, and he wanted to touch everything and feel everything and, and <laughs> you know, but he didn't have a vision. And, and to my knowledge, not one person stepped up and was able to help that man. Not one person that stood out. Not Frank McKenna. Frank McKenna brought him down, in my opinion. Uh, um, and Frank shouldn't have done that. And, uh, it, you know, he should have had said, MB Power, no. You don't sell MB Power on your first term. If, it, if there's a case for it, we'll talk about it in the, in the future down the road. Yeah. And, and let's really think this thing through. And that's something that Frank could have got away with, believe it or not, like by his second or third term. He, he had built up enough political capital that would have allowed him to do it. But Sean was like a kid, young, inexperienced on some level. And he was just in way, 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 way over, over his, his head. head. Okay, There's well, no question. Leave it at that.